One of the biggest questions people that are interested in computer science have is how much math am I going to have to do? And in today's video, I'm going to try to answer that question for you guys. My name is Sid. I'm a first year computer science major at Georgia Tech. And in today's video, I'm just going to be walking you through like all the math courses that are required for my degree here at Georgia Tech, trying to generalize that to all colleges because the math requirements are generally the same across all programs for computer science. Um, I'll also talk to you about why I think, you know, you don't really need to be good at math to be a good programmer, obviously, but to get a computer science degree, there are going to be hard math classes that you're going to have to take. And I'll just walk you through what all of those are and, you know, how best to prepare for them. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So let me give you some context on what a computer science degree at Georgia Tech actually looks like. Every major, every computer science major at Georgia Tech has to declare two threads, which are kind of like specializations in computer science. These include things like intelligence, which is kind of like the AI and machine learning track, devices, which is building physical devices, theory, which is theoretical computer science, modeling and simulation, which is, you know, exactly what it sounds like, and four other threads that, uh, you know, you could pick any combination of two out of to then be your CS degree. Every CS major has to take some base set of classes, you know, like the basics, like intro to programming, data structures and algorithms, along with some other general requirements. And then they take the specialized requirements for each of their threads. Naturally, some of these requirements are gonna be more math heavy than others and different threads will require you to do different levels of math. And that's how it works at Georgia Tech. And it's honestly one of the best things about the program because you will end up taking classes that are much more suited towards your specific computer science interests than having everybody take an operating systems class because a lot of people don't wanna write operating systems. So without further ado, let me jump straight into actually talking about what all of these classes are, starting with the general requirements and then going into the specializations that I have to take. Let's talk about every math class that all computer science majors are required to take. First of all, you have calculus one and two, which should come as no surprise to anybody, followed up by linear algebra, again, no surprise. And after you take linear algebra in the first two calculuses, you can take multivariable calculus, after which you can take probability and statistics, and then, you know, at some point you'll take combinatorics on your way through these six classes, I think I said. And all of these classes are pretty standard across most computer science degrees, like regardless of where you're getting it from. And depending on, you know, what your previous math background is, you'll find some of them harder than others. In my opinion, the hardest out of these is going to be combinatorics, just because it's kind of different from any other type of math you've done before, you know, usually like proof heavy. It's combinatorics, if you don't know, is the math behind counting. And although that might sound simple, it's actually really hard to count correctly, or at least it is for me. And if you don't already have like previous experience with combinatorics or, you know, either through a class or through just doing a lot of contest math in high school, then you probably find that class to be slightly challenging. Another class that I find to be challenging uh, is honestly calculus two and the end part. The, the first part of calculus two where you're just integrating, that's like, it's not that bad. But the end part when you're talking about series, uh, series of sequences, it might get a little bit confusing for, to some people. And I know a lot of people found it confusing. Personally to me, I think calc one and two were both fine and calc three was a little bit harder. Uh, calc three being multivariable calculus. But as long as you know, you have your foundations right in calc one and calc two, they will definitely be probably the easier classes that you take throughout obtaining your degree. Linear algebra, I find that at Georgia Tech, a lot of people really struggle with, again, because it's kind of a different math class from what you're used to, right? You have to visualize a lot of things that you really never had to visualize before. You have to think about how matrices uh, actually affect things in the physical world. The thing about rotations and translations and a bunch of stretching and stuff all on the, you know, all on a coordinate plane that you have to think of in your head. And it gets to be confusing if you're not really used to thinking about these types of things before. So again, it all comes down to if you can grind through the material for these classes, you'll be fine. And if you're not gonna grind through it, then you somehow, usually in your second semester or your first semester, you'll have to also take a discrete math class. And you know, it's a math class, math's in the title, but at Georgia Tech it's listed under the CS department because you know, only CS majors have to take discrete math. And there's other like proof-based math classes for other majors. Anyways, with that aside, Discrete math is also something that some people might find challenging because again, it's different from what you're used to. You're going from, you know, just probably doing um, FRQs and AP Calc to doing actual proofs that might, that may or may not be hard depending on how you view math. And this is a class that really more tests your conceptual understanding of things and your ability to problem solve than it does being able to just take a formula and then just mash it onto a piece of paper and then plug in numbers and then you're done. Discrete math is honestly really interesting. A lot of people find it boring. The common thread among CS majors across a lot of colleges is that it sucks and that it's a very hard class. But again, if you put in the time to grind it through, uh, grind it out, you'll be fine. So that's a total of seven math classes so far. And let's get into what classes I have to take specifically for my threats. 
The threads that I've picked are theory and intelligence, which should really come as no surprise to anybody that's watched a few uh, more than a few videos on this channel because I love math and I love AI. So that just seems like the natural threads for me to pick. Anyways, the first class that I'm going to have to take, the first additional class I'm going to have to take is a second course in linear algebra for the machine learning aspect of my threads. And this course is going to be a little bit more proof heavy. I haven't taken it yet. A lot of these classes I haven't taken yet are is going to be more proof heavy and much more focused on the theoretical aspects of linear algebra than the first class was, which was more computational and, you know, just being able to make sure that, you know, you can plug in and you can compute certain factorizations of matrices and whatnot. This one's going to be more theoretical and probably require a little bit more brain power to properly understand. Second class I'm going to have to take is a math class out of three possible options. Those three options are number theory, graph theory, and combinatorial analysis. Number theory is, you know, the study numbers. <laughs> graph theory is the study of graphs, which are discrete math structures, which are kind of just a collection of nodes and edges that represent some sort of information. And combinatorial analysis is a, co is a continuation on combinatorics, where you're doing more combo um, and you're just getting better at it. And I, right now I'm leaning towards taking graph theory out of the, those three options because I'm a big fan of graphs and networks. Uh, but you know, who knows? That's a class that I'll be taking next year, I think. And we'll see what happens when it comes to that. Next up, we have a design and analysis of algorithms class, which as it, the name suggests, is a class about algorithms and designing them and you know analyzing them for uh, efficiency purposes and whatnot. And again, this is a fairly math heavy class. You're gonna have to do quite a bit of math to understand the algorithms and then more discrete math to actually prove the time complexity of these algorithms. Following up with that, I have an advanced algorithms class to take, which I think will be much along the same vein of, okay, here's an algorithm, you know, learn about it, figure out how to prove its efficiency, add their things like that. And again, there's gonna be more math involved here to both understanding the algorithms and being able to prove the algorithms. Of course, I'll also have to take some AI classes for my intelligence, uh, for my intelligence thread requirements. That'll require me to do a lot of math to figure out, you know, how machine learning algorithms work, but I'm not counting that right now. I'm only counting the four uh, that I talked about, design and analysis of algorithms, advanced algorithms, graph theory, and a second course in linear algebra, bringing the grand total of really grind-like math classes up to 11, which honestly speaking, isn't that much. If you're in college for four years, two semesters each year, that's eight semesters and 11 math classes, so you're gonna have to take like 1.3 math classes every semester. And you know, that's honestly not that bad, right? You can get through that as long as you grind really hard. So now let's talk about how you can actually grind for math classes and whether, you know, CS is for you if you already don't like math. If you don't like math, should you do computer science? My answer to that is yeah, sure. I sure there's like a lot of math requirements that you need to do for CS, but if you really do feel you're, find yourself being really interested in computer science, but being discouraged by the math, don't be. As stupid as it might sound for me to say that, um, I'm being honest. Do I think that everybody has the ability to pass all of the classes I talked about? Yeah, for sure. For some people, it's definitely gonna be harder than others because you know people have different natural aptitudes for math. But at the end of the day, if you do put enough time studying, you know, going through online YouTube lectures, um, you know, going to office hours, asking your friends, you know, putting in the hours, you'll be fine. Some people will need to put in more hours than others. And that is totally fine because at the end of the day, you're gonna go to the same place and get the same degree. Regardless, you don't need to be great at math to be a good programmer or software engineer. You just need to be good at problem solving and usually ending up being good at math improves your problem solving ability. Now, I think that regardless of how you view math, whether you view it as something daunting, daunting and unforgiving, I still think that it's something that's really cool and you should put your best effort into learning how to do it well, or at least learning how to appreciate it getting through all the math requirements for your CS degree might be hard and you know very very unrelenting on the grind but i'm very sure that as long as you really want to get your you know learn more about CS you can do it everybody can get through the math requirements for a CS degree as long as you put in the right number of hours and there's a lot of different ways to study for it and if you want me to make a video on how to study for math for computer science then leave a comment down below and i'll get on it Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, join my Discord server down below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.